Okay, so so far we've we've seen two approaches to solving this problem. So the first approach utilized the analytical formulas, which represent all of the impedance transformations and uh, the transformations, uh, you know, of, of the reflection coefficients. The second approach made use of the scales that exist on the Smith chart itself. Um, the third approach is going to be the use of uh, SimSmith. So I prepared a little video, video demonstration of how I would handle this problem using SimSmith. Okay, so I'll just pause it as we go through here. So first note that we have our, can I write? No, okay, I can't write, but notice over here that we have our a 75 ohm load and I set my system impedance to 75 ohms. So hopefully you can see over here on the Smith chart that the center of the Smith chart now reads 75 ohms rather than uh, the 50 ohms that we're used to. So the first thing I do is I orientate myself a little bit. I enter in the, um, the load impedance to see where it is on the Smith chart. Okay, so click the little star on the, loca on the uh, location on the Smith chart and you can see the little readout there on the bottom right corner where we have 60 minus J45 and we have the reflection coefficient and we have the SWR circle. So the next thing I want to do is figure out the location of the load impedance. So the first thing I do is I see if I can I, I see if I can find the location manually and I can't so instead I enter the load impedance here so it marks that point on the Smith chart. So I put my star there just to kind of uh, orientate myself. So at this point I know that I'm trying to go from the blue circle on the bottom, which is my load impedance, to the input impedance marked by the star up at the top here. So the problem is asking for a shunt stub followed by a series transmission line. So next I kind of lost the uh, little scale or the little printout that's on from the lower right corner corresponding to the black star on the Smith chart there. I know the SWR is somewhere around 3 so I enter in 3. I know it's it's not quite on the input impedance that I want so I increase it a little bit until it looks just about right. Then I can pick this point here and drag the little marker until my curves end up on the VSWR circle. So note that when I perform that action, the length of the open circuit at stub changed to a value that would allow such a transformation. So now to move along the VSWR circle, I manually change that length parameter until I reach the desired input impedance and then I am done. So you can see how making use of design software like SimSmith or ADS or Genesis can definitely make things a lot easier and save a lot of time. Okay so that is it for section 8.2. Uh, next time we'll move on to section 8.3 and I will see you later.